Hey guys, welcome to this beautiful day in early February. Man, we've really had a truly mild winter here in the Midwest. But anyways, I have yet another 2023 model I wanna show you. And this one I haven't been able to show because we've had such few in inventory and the ones that we have had for the 2023 model year have just kind of flown off the shelf, uh, been deposited before they've even arrived here on the lot. But finally, we have a new unit to show you and this is the 2023 Hyundai Venue Limited. So if you guys haven't seen the model year changes video I did on the venue, I highly recommend checking that out. But anyways, for the 23 model year, it's essentially a carryover from 2022. The limited trim as seen behind me did get three noticeable changes. The first one is it did get the rear occupant alert, the door logic type. So it only uses the door sensors to kind of uh, sense whether an occupant may or may not be in the back seat. The second change it did receive is it got the wireless charging for 23 here only on the limited. So that is a nice addition. There's no Hyundai digital key or anything like that. So it is a little bit unfortunate in that regard. And the third change across all venues is the new TFT slash 4.2 inch color display for the instrument panel. Now that's something that Hyundai was a little bit vague upon in my changes video. I thought it was just going to be a 4.2 inch color display like some of the other ones with the analog gauges. However, this one actually receives the new instrument cluster that's also found in certain trims of the lower Palisade. So that is a nice touch. I'll show you guys once we get on the interior, but those are essentially the changes as far as the limited trim goes. Now for 2023, it did get an increase in price just like many other models on the market. It was fairly modest. It was just over $500, including the $40 uh, destination fee increase pretty much across all the Hyundai lineup. So now the limited trim in specific starts just over $24,000, including destination. So to me, a relatively good value still considering all the features and amenities that the limited trim has to offer in specific. But let's not waste any more time. Take a look at what the 2023 Hyundai Venue Limited has to offer for just over $24,000. Now the venue in front of us is finished in the intense blue exterior and this one has the black interior. I think this color suits the venue quite well and just the subcompact uh, class of vehicle as it is kind of a bright kind of cheery color versus that of kind of the grayscale colors that you find on most mainstream vehicles. But anyway, looking at the front end of the limited, you will find some unique lighting aspects that are only found on the top limited trim. So starting off with the grill, you can see it is the chrome accent with the chrome Hyundai emblem. You'll find the LED daytime running lights are on since the vehicle is currently running. Uh, this is accompanied with the LED projector headlights and incandescent turn signals up top. So this is the only trim to feature any LED lighting. And I do really think that is a nice aspect and reason to get the limited uh, because the LED output is definitely gonna be quite good. Coming to the side of the vehicle, you can see matte black accented plastic that kind of suits many SUVs on the market. Coming to the wheels and tires, you will find 17 inch alloy wheels finished in the dark gray machine finish. They are wrapped in 205, 55, 17 inch Nexon all season tires. Turn signal indicators here on the front fenders. That is a unique touch that you really won't find on any other Hyundai model currently. Body color mirror caps, they are going to be heated, which are only standard on the limited and do have blind spot detection. Regular proximity entry on both front door handles. And backing up here to the side, you can see the limited trim also does feature the nice roof rails up top in the silver accent. And you can get optional or available two-tone roof color options. So if you want the body in one color and the roof in another, that is available with certain color combinations on the venue. Out back, you will find more LED lighting. So you do get the LED tail lights on the limited with the incandescent turn signals and reverse lights. More of that black accent and plastic with the silver trim in the lower diffuser part. Venue nicely spelled out on the tailgate. You can see since this is kind of a hatchback design, you will find the rear wiper on the back uh, with kind of the normal shorty antenna up top. But as a whole, this is a very nice looking subcompact SUV. Again, considering it starts just over $20,000 as a whole. So I think this overall is a very good vehicle for those who might be new to the market or just searching for a nice affordable SUV. Now stepping on the inside, once again, this one has the black interior. It is kind of a leatherette slash cloth interior on the limited. Starting out here on the door panel, you can see you do have hard touch upper plastics, a nicely padded armrest here with some white accent stitching, power windows, mirrors, and locks with automatic driver window and a small amount of storage in the lower door panel. I do kind of like this uh, matte gunmetal accent here on the door handle pole. You will find a six-way manual driver's seat, so it does have height adjustment. You can see it is finished in the leatherette and cloth insert with the white accent piping and stitching. 
and immediately agreed to one of the new changes for 2023, and that is the digital instrument cluster. This is actually standard across every venue for 2023, and there was a little bit of confusion early on in the model year, as uh, Hyundai claimed that this was a 4.2 inch color display, and I didn't realize that was accompanying the digital aspects on the outside, the TFT display, if you will. So this is fully digital. Um, however, the only part that is programmable is the 4.2 inch display in the center that you control here on the right side of the steering wheel. So this is a very nice display for a subcompact SUV, I will admit. It even does change with the drive modes. You can see going to sport mode, it kind of changes to red and normal and snow are kind of the nice blue color. But anyways, you'll find a leather wrap steering wheel with white accent stitching. This is a very nice touch. Audio and Bluetooth controls here on the left side. The right side does have some of your controls for that display, like I mentioned, as well as your normal cruise control. No adaptive cruise is available in any venue, uh, nor is lane following assist. However, you will find lane keeping assist. Some white accents around the vents and across the dashboard. And coming to the infotainment system, this is the eight inch infotainment with built-in navigation. So the limited is the only trim of the venue to feature built-in navigation. However, that does come at a cost and that costs you wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. I know a lot of people, including myself, automatically say the eight inch display across Hyundai and Kia vehicles features wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. However, this vehicle, as well as the Veloster N, were the exceptions because they had built-in navigation uh, for their recent versions. So keep that in mind. If you get built-in navigation on the eight inch display, you lose wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. So that is found in the SE as well as the SEL venues. However, the top limited trim gets the built-in nav, which you lose that functionality. However, you still of course have the wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You do have driver profiles up here, which you can change some of the uh, radio and infotainment settings. XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth inputs, all that stuff is good here. Volume and two knobs, they are a little bit different sizing, but again, no complaints. That is physical buttons along with all of your shortcuts. Single zone automatic climate control with two USB ports down below. You can see, oh, actually I'm surprised by this. You get type C in this venue. I was not expecting that. And this is one of the first vehicles outside of the Palisades to start featuring type C inputs. Good on Hyundai for that but the USB-A is continuing on with the data port, so keep that in mind. Um, you do have the wireless charging pad, again, new for 2023 here in the venue limited. Leather wrap shift knob with some white accents, heated front seats, and of course your drive mode select. Sport, snow, and normal drive modes. Regular manual parking brake. Here's your proximity key fob for this vehicle. It does have remote start as well as blue link capabilities. Padded armrest here in a rubberized texture. See there is a small amount of storage inside, but not too much. And it does slide via that lever right there. So huge bonus in my opinion, makes it definitely more comfortable to live with. Up top you'll find a light gray headliner, vanity illumination, manual dimming interior rear view mirror, and you do have the overhead console lights that is incandescent, as well as your blue link, point of interest, and SOS buttons, and a little microphone as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the back seat of the venue. You can see the door opening is fairly wide for a subcompact and most of the materials will fall through. So hard touch upper, nice soft touch padded armrest here with the same accent stitching and a little bit of bottle storage down below. Materials are the same as well when it comes to the seating surfaces. And stepping inside, the step in height is very easy. And there is a good amount of room in the back for, again, the overall size of this vehicle. Out back, you won't find any AC vents or USB charging, even in this top limited. You do have one map net on the passenger side. But you can see the seat is fairly far back. Um, I don't think it's quite up to my driving position, but you can see I still have about an inch of leg room, good amount of foot room down below. And of course, headroom is not an issue being a, a kind of boxier shape. 60-40 split folding seats, no center armrests or anything. But again, for this type of vehicle, the seating material is quite nice. So that's a nice bonus here in the back seat, but otherwise a pretty basic interior. Taking a look at the trunk, just an electronic release latch, but no um, power assist or anything, but that's not to be expected on a subcompact. Here behind the second row seats, there is a good amount of storage space, again, for the overall footprint. You do get a nice privacy cover that is removable. You do get a little lamp here on the left side, no 12 volt outlets or anything. And underneath the floor, you do have a temporary spare tire with your roadside toolkit, 
and this floor does appear to be an adjustable height, so you can move it down to gain a little bit more room kind of up top here. So that is a nice touch. This one does have the accessories with the cargo mat and stuff like that. Take a look at the passenger front seat. Of course, all the materials will be the same over here. You get a four-way manual seat, so no height adjustment. Here on the dash, you can see you do get a little storage cubby. Glove box is not damped, doesn't have interior illumination, and is a little bit on the smaller side, but still very usable nonetheless. So that's a look at the Venue Limited interior. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood, see what powers the Venue, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. Under the hood of every Venue, you'll find the same 1.6 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that puts out 121 horsepower and 113 pound feet of torque only through the front wheels as all Venues come in front wheel drive. This is paired to the IVT type transmission, which is a CVT type transmission with a few upgrades to make it feel a little bit more conventional in that aspect. But overall, you'll find the same powertrain and drivetrain across every venue on the market. And again, it does suit this car quite well here in the subcompact class of SUV. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful on this 2023 Hyundai Venue Limited. If you did, please hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel in these videos. Subscribe if you guys are not already subscribed and check out some of their content I have, including walk around just like this, how-to videos, as well as model your changes. So I have a bunch of content. I'm sure you guys will find something you'll enjoy here on the channel. And overall, I think the Venue Limited definitely has a nice value to it. So if you guys have seen some of the news in recent times about the Hyundai Accent being discontinued for 2023, well, the Venue was definitely the replacement for that vehicle as it kind of fits in the market a little bit more where Hyundai and other manufacturers are targeting, and that is the SUV space of vehicles. Now, whether or not it's a subcompact SUV, a compact, or a mid-size, full-size SUV, consumers are definitely gravitated to the SUV style of body because they generally sit up a little bit higher and have a, just a little bit more ground clearance than that of a normal sedan or even a smaller hatchback like the Elantra GT, which was also discontinued by Hyundai a few years ago. So as an all-around vehicle for many people's lifestyles, they fit quite well. However, personally, I would like to see some of the smaller, uh, regular compact and mid-size sedans hopefully continue on at least for the short term until we get some electric replacements uh, here in the distant future. So I have had some comments on the channel asking whether I would recommend a Venue or a Kona to consumers that are shopping around the sub $25,000 price point. And like I mentioned, you can get a Kona in this price point. However, it's gonna be front wheel drive or it's going to be a base all wheel drive SE. And you're losing out on some of the features that this vehicle has, including the built-in navigation, uh, the LED lighting on the outside, the heated front seats, the wireless charging pad, uh, proximity entry, stuff like that. Uh, may or may not be available with the Kona that you're looking at in the same price point. So that is kind of my answer to that, is are you willing to sacrifice some of the features on the inside for all-wheel drive in a Kona, or would you rather have some of the features of the venue limited here specifically um, and stay in the same sub $25,000 price point? So it's kind of a trade-off there. Overall, I think all-wheel drive definitely is handy for many people. However, it is not necessary as long as you keep good tires on the vehicle and kind of drive according to the conditions on the roadway. Personally, I really can't recommend one or the other 100% of the time. Uh, I would just definitely do your research, drive, and look at both vehicles and make the decision based on your needs. So let me know your thoughts on the venue down in the comment section below. If you happen to own a venue and have some ownership experiences, let me know how your vehicle has been, how it's treated you, and overall how happy you are and satisfied you are with the vehicle. I'm definitely interested in hearing that, and it might help some people out that might be searching for a new venue for themselves. So leave that down below, and make sure you guys stay tuned to the channel because I will be visiting the 2023 Chicago Auto Show later this week. This video will likely go up after that because um, I am very busy preparing for that and editing some content that I already have filmed as well. So stay tuned to the channel um, and take a look at some of those auto show videos if you guys are viewing this in the future. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.